I'm a state representative Derek Slapp representing the 19th House District in the General Assembly and that is about a third of West Hartford, uh, part of Avon and part of Farmington. But the uh, vast uh, majority of the district is West Hartford so I thought it was very appropriate right after our municipal election to have on uh, our mayor Sherry Cantor and we're going to talk about um, the challenges and opportunities in West Hartford, how the state can be a good partner and I think we'll also learn a little bit uh, about the mayor um, as well. Um, and she's a, a very, very uh, busy public servant um, who's doing a lot of things, but really um, trying uh, her best to make sure that West Hartford remains a great place um, to live, to work, to send your kids to school, and that it uh, remains affordable as well. So without uh, further uh, ado, I want to welcome Mayor Sherry Cantor. Thanks for joining me. Thank you, Derek. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to be able to be with you and, uh, and address our public. And, and congratulations. Great. Thank you. So it's, uh, you know, elections are always um, stressful, yeah. right, and a lot of time. And did you take a few days after to kind of relax? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. No way. Yep. <laughs> we have Straight a lot going work. on in town, yep. so we had to get right back to work. And then we had a very, very wonderful Thanksgiving having uh, 40 people at my house, so I had to uh, sort of dive right into that. So. Great. Well, congratulations. Yeah, um, and, you know, you mentioned that you, you didn't take a break and you stayed right on it. So why don't we talk about some of the big challenges that you see uh, West Hartford facing? Obviously, there's a lot of great stuff going on. We'll, we'll get to that as well. But what's on the, you know, the, the top of your list right now, your big priorities? So the immediate challenge, actually, was the instability um, in the budget. Um, so we had an incredible variety of um, unknowns <laughs> and, and it ranged from um, a full uh, full cut to our yep. all of state funding um, to no cut in state funding and it was sort of all that area and not knowing you know we adopt our budget before the state adopts their budget and we have uh, usually used the governor's numbers um, and the governor's cut initial his, on his yep. budget initial cut was about 14, 15 million dollars. And then uh, the executive order was a full cut uh, to West Hartford. And so, so we had to make some assumptions. So we talked to our representatives about right. how you would right. work with us and for us um, at the state capitol. And, um, and we talked about strategies, and I went and testified, and we talked about the fact that West Hartford is a, you know, a very diverse community. But we had to make some assumptions at budget time. So we used our best judgment, um, mm -hmm. our, an educated um, assumption, uh, and we knew we were going to get cut something, or we thought we would. Uh, and so we we did cut the budget. We um, went back to the town and the and the Board of Education and um, and the superintendent actually cut about two million dollars and we cut about two and a half million dollars. Some of that was capital funding that we delayed. Right. Um, and we you know we did what we could and we are we are lean and mean on both sides. Um, and we uh, and we said this is as far as we feel we should go to maintain the quality of life in in town um, and preserve the safety and the quality of education right. which preserves our home values and um, and we assumed a seven million dollar uh, cut overall um, and it's very interesting that that cut sort of happened we were about five million uh, with the motor vehicle shortfall um, and then we just received another 2.2 from the governor so uh, unfortunately um, in the meantime we were put on a watch by Moody's uh, we're triple-a bond rated community one of seven in the state mm -hmm. that's triple-a by both Moody's and Standard & Poor we are by far the the uh, least um, wealthy of those communities we are the most diverse um, and so it's really been a management, uh, the way we've managed our town and been committed and our residents have been so committed to the quality of life in our town and the financial stability. And uh, we need to preserve that. And right. so we, um, that is uh, something we were hoping we could use that $2.2 million to stabilize some things and, uh, and it was now taken from us. But um, our cut and I hope that we'll continue to fight to try to preserve that to and get that back. Those. Absolutely. And then whole, you know, and we, but we, we do have, we, we have some um, very old pension issues that we've been addressing over decades. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, some behaviors that I unfortunately were, were uh, you know, some decisions that were made that were unfortunate that we're paying for now. Um, in the meantime, we work very, very uh, closely with our unions to stabilize sure. that liability, but we have old liabilities, not unsimilar as, to the state. As does the state. Right. Seven, 70 years of right. irresponsible behavior. Exactly. At the state level. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Um, so to put it in perspective, right, when we started, and we don't want to drown you in too many numbers, right. but I think it is worth noting that, so the governor's initial proposal way back, almost a year ago now, really, um, was about 14, 14 and a half million dollars, which is, um, again, to put it in perspective, uh, essentially the same amount of funding for West Hartford's police department, right, right give or take. Right. So actually a little more than our, yeah. Right. It, so it's, it's a big hit. Yeah, it's a big hit. Right. Then it kept going up and up in the governor's plans and the governor's <clears throat> proposals. Uh, eventually there was an executive order and we had just kind of crept into executive order you know, uh, land, uh, so to speak. Um, and that was going to be full elimination, mm -hmm. about 25, 25 million dollars. Yeah. Uh, so uh, state funding gone, 25 million. Um, so the General Assembly has been able to uh, put back the vast majority of that. Um, and and you, you mentioned that um, just recently uh, the governor um, cut about another two. And I believe the General Assembly, we are going to come together, hopefully in a bipartisan way, and try to put those put those funds back. But my question um, is, you know, there are some who say, look, um, with the state's fiscal problems, <clears throat> we should, the state, right, should, um, you know, maybe we shouldn't fund towns, right, okay. at the current levels. And there are some locally who say we should budget without the $25 million completely. Right. So imagine that we're getting no state support. Um, my position is that is going to be very bad for our public schools and um, for our property taxpayers. Right. What do you think about that? I completely agree with you. Um, we pay the seventh most income tax to the state of Connecticut, yet our ECS were ranked 111th in wealth factor. So we also, our, our median income is smack in the middle of the state. So what that means is the demographics of West Hartford are really unique. We have wealthy people. We have almost it's almost like the state as a whole mm -hmm. we have Greenwich you know or the Gold Coast right. paying in a very high percentage of the income yet there's significant needs in all of our urban centers and our and many of our our towns so we have wealth and we contribute a lot to the state yet we get very very little back for what we contribute and it goes to education primarily. Right. This doesn't go, and we are 128th out of 169 towns in per pupil spending, and we're ranked as one of the top. So we are, if we were failing, we would get more from the state of Connecticut. If we were an alliance district, right. which our demographics actually could put us in that, in that category, but we're not because we've worked so hard to uh, minimize the overhead and we, we have combined every job possible between our ed education administration and our town administration. And when I go to statewide meetings, people are just talking about that now. We've done that. We right. did that 10 right. years ago. We've been working on it for a long time and we look at those efficiencies all the time on, on things that we can do. So to me, the state should be investing in a community like West Hartford that is a, a inner ring um, to Hartford, yep. um, and that has been successful and is a model that that has not been so successful around our country and around our state. So I, again, think the, uh, the investment, it's a small investment that the state makes in the town of West Hartford for, for what we provide right, to the greater right. Hartford region in the state. And, um, and I feel very strongly that for our for families, for education, but also for seniors who actually pick up a decent amount of that education budget, this is fair. We have no other revenue stream. We have no right. options. No, I, Property look, tax I, is it. I know? agree, and I think that you know we know that overall uh, funding from the state to towns and cities all across the state is about 25% of the budget. <clears throat> so together, it is very significant. But I think the strength of our towns, right, and our right. cities, um, in, in towns like West Hartford especially, is what makes Connecticut what it is. Absolutely. Right? And we have to support them. Um, and if we don't, schools, right, property taxpayers uh, are, are going to get hit. So um, one good thing that came out of the, of the General Assembly, I think, this past year, you know, when they say change is hard, right, right. is that um, for the first time in a decade, at least, we had a bipartisan budget. Right. So I think that we agreed, Republicans and Democrats together in the General Assembly, that the governor's strategy of really going after uh, the towns and cities was not 
was not going to fly. Right. Um, so I'm hopeful, you know, I'm not Pollyannish, but hopeful that we can continue to work together to support to support the towns. Right. And I think one of the, I, I agree with you, that was the best outcome of, of that. And what really was so hurtful in the process was pitting people against each other and pitting communities against each other. Right. And that that's not um, right. the best of Connecticut. So. And we don't want to be certainly all doom and gloom. And there's so many great things going on in West Hartford. So I will certainly want to give you a chance to uh, address a few of the things that you see as you drive around. Um, you say, wow, that's a great project or something great that's going on. Well, we have, we've actually had some wonderful, wonderful projects. We actually have a, a big commercial center going up across from uh, West Farms Mall um, and some activities that's going to also also create a little bit of a challenge in Blueback Square. We know that retail is a little challenged yeah. in um, brick and mortar retail is a little challenged. But we are, West Harvard Center is thriving. Our Park Road area is thriving. Our Bishop's Corner area is thriving. So things are, are wonderful. We have new residential developments that happen have happened all over our, our community. Um, and we have a brand new building going up that will be um, opening actually pretty soon uh, on New Park on the tran on mm -hmm. transit you know oriented development which is going to be a big focus right on our uh, so actually people could move in there and not have a car like that's right. a unique situation for yeah. West Hartford we have a brewery that we never yeah. had before in the industrial zone we have food parks you know I have four millennial children and um, right. and this is what they want exactly. and so yeah. uh, we actually went to New Park Brewery had a great time with my brothers and um, and my kids and it was wonderful my youngest son just turned 21 so that was sort of nice okay. to be able to all sure. all do that so um, and we just have approved some really wonderful zoning for West Hartford Center to help to solidify um, those large spaces that mm -hmm. might not be so right for retail anymore. As REI moves to the Corbin's Corner area, um, we just approved an experiential zone, um, and that would be to allow us to have a place where people could drink beer, listen to some music, and bowl, you know? And so we didn't have zoning for that before, which gotcha. is kind of odd. Um, we also did incentive zonings, incentive zones in our uh, center area to provide incentives for uh, improvement of public space, to invite improved um, historical preservation and um, and um, and some potential density for uh, for West Hartford Center. Uh, any project would still have to go through the same, actually, probably more um, zoning. Um, uh, requirements yeah. And, yeah. and approvals, but it allows a developer to do some unique kinds of activities. It's sort right. of so you're being uh, nimble, shall yes, we say. Yes, exactly. More nimble than we've been in the past. And, right. and I'm really proud of that because we, we see the benefit of it, you know, all over town. Sure. Now, one thing I have to ask you, uh, I get off exit 43 okay. almost every single uh, day. Yeah, I know. back I got from work, yeah. right? And many of you do as well, or you drive by it. That's the Park Road exit. So what's going on at exit 43, okay. the off and on ramp? So actually, Actually, this started a while ago, and Mayor Slifka and I actually accompanied Senator. Um, we were we were mm -hmm. we took Senator Murphy. I actually remember he got in my car, and my my car that had an automatic seat that moved up, and I am a lot shorter than than Senator <laughs> Murphy. And he was like, "Oh my gosh, my knees are going to get capped." But anyway, it was a memorable little yeah. field trip to the interchange of uh, the 80, the eighty four exit, right. and uh, and it is it's not a, a good set up and engineered for not the volume that we had ever anticipated right. um, mm -hmm. and there was really a great opportunity for improvement um, and and Senator Murphy really wanted to go to bat for us and and get money so um, to, to redesign that area that makes traffic flow in a much safer way and so and it is a major thoroughfare not only for West Hartford residents but also the west you know your other district you know yeah. west of um, so it really it's very yeah. helpful for uh, for so many people in the area and anybody actually at Hartford as well if we can get in and out it's all helpful right and, so, yeah, and retail too right and, and retail absolutely and folks who want to get off our and center go to, whether it be Whole Foods or the Blue and our new hotel Delamar exactly. exactly yeah so I get off and I so I, I get off on the right and I have to get all the way over to the left it's not safe very quickly so, I'm telling you yeah. when you're teaching your children how to drive and you're trying to navigate that it is a very stressful. Right, of course. <laughs> be careful, be careful. Anyway, so change is coming. <laughs> change is coming, and the federal government is paying 80% of that. Yep. Um, the state is paying 10%, and the town is paying 10%. Although the town has taken the lead role in designing it so that we know that our 
our residents and our the people you know we have great engineer town engin uh, engineer yep. and and our staff is very very accomplished and they are really concerned so about it'll the quality. So it will be widened is that what's happening? It will be widened and there won't be that transfer of uh, from that you know so f so far back you know where you sort of have to you, mm -hmm. you really are sort of stuck where you are for a while and then have to transfer very so towards so the able end, to you will do it or so, sooner, okay. and so there well, will be a sounds... safer flow and a better flow off the off the ramp. But okay, so let's do. We'll, we're running a little bit out of time, so we'll do kind of okay. rapid fire, okay. right? Sure. I'll put out a bunch of issues. You okay. can address okay. them any which sure. way you want. Um, dog park. I know we have a roving, roaming dog park. Right now, so, yep, a pop up, um, and we've done semi permanent now. Like okay. we're doing a more like a month or two months or three months, and we're still working with the dog park coalition to find um, a the right space or spaces and, and right. um, yeah. but it's great because you are engaged with the coalition Absolutely. and with neighbors too and Absolutely. i think that's really what matters to people is no they want question. they want a voice it's right? been a frustrating process but we, we yep. continue to work towards okay uh north main north main so we have some challenges on north main street no question um i actually run and walk along north main um and i you know it, it was never designed to be a four-lane highway right. um with uh, the walking the way it is. Um, we are going to have a cha uh, an extra challenging engineering um, ch project there. We need to rebuild a bridge. And so in the spring of 2018, for about a year and a half, we're going to be down to two lanes. Um, and there was some study done, but it wasn't as comprehensive as we feel we yep. need because we don't have an option for that traffic to go. Um, so uh, we have, you know, Trout Brook, and we've got Mountain Road to do north-south. Right, right. And so um, it's, you know, well, we will look at diversions, yeah. and we will be able to have some questions, and we will engage through our community planning committee as we go through this project on what are the pitfalls and what do we have to look out for, right. and then do a sort of regroup and figure out how we can best serve our residents, not only the residents that live along the street, but all of our yep. residents in, in moving traffic, but in a safe way that makes sense for that for that street. That'll be so a challenge on Halloween. It's a very Halloween, right? With our oh, friend. Oh, yes, Matt I know, I know. He's a, he's and a it's such a, I know. And, and he actually, you know, you yeah. watch as you, people coming from all over right. to look so at that and study. Now, it'll be, we'll have to get through it. We, yeah, we we'll will. figure it out. Yep. We will figure it out. All right, so um, last question. Is there something as uh, about you that uh, maybe would surprise folks, your constituents, um, as we get to know you more in your mayoral capacity? Anything um, that you could tell us? So what, what makes you tick? Or what do you do when you're not doing all your activities and and parenting and everything. What's okay? So I actually am. Um, I love, love, love to travel, and I um, my husband has a global practice, and so that has been a wonderful thing. And one of the one of the benefits from that is we've been we visited all over the the globe, yep. and we've been housed by people, um, and we do the same. And uh, we have brought them to West Hartford. We brought them. We also have a house on Cape Cod, um, and um, it's really wonderful to see our community through other people's eyes and people that are global and have traveled the, the, the world. And we live in a really special community. When people from Lyon, France, or mm -hmm. from um, Bangalore, India, or from Tokyo, Japan, um, come and visit West Hartford, or even live here for a couple of months, sure. and we also house, we've housed a lot of people over time for a month or two months. Uh, we had two exchange students live at our house as well, one from Germany, one from Israel. And I think, you know, that is a passion of mine to share our little piece of the world and um, it's a really special place. And I, I hope people understand how good our quality of life is and how lucky we are to have wonderful elected officials like you working well, on behalf you. of our town and all of our residents that work so hard to improve our community day after day and how invested we all are. So that's really, I think, the yeah. you know one of the things that I... I also, you will find me doing cartwheels and running. I'm very... Uh, I, I saw you do a cartwheel <laughs> in the Park Road Parade yes, yes, in it's October, a... and it was it, it <laughs> stopped the whole few. parade. It was very, in it was heels, very cool. So in heels, I, yeah, it was amazing. So. I did dis dislocate my arm doing one in new boots, and I slipped and whatever. And my kids said to me, 
Mom, you're not going to stop doing cartwheels, are you? And I said, I hope not. <laughs> you you <laughs> so have to. I have You have to keep going. That's your thing. Yes. So, well, thank yeah. you so much thank for uh, spending some time uh, with me and uh, with uh, our constituents and, you know, sharing all the all the good things that's going on uh, that are going on in town. So I think there are challenges, of course. But to your point, when you have people come from out of town, it's really it, it gives us perspective right? right? and gratitude, I think, right. too. Absolutely. So. And thank you for all you do and your partnership because we communicate all the time. And I think that yeah. is only a helpful situation. So thank you so much. Agreed. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, we'll take a quick break and back with uh, slap salutes and uh, two special guests from Solomon Schechter Day School. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome back to a segment that we call Slap Salutes. And it's kind of a fun way to uh, highlight folks uh, in our community who are going above and beyond and really making um, concerted, sustained efforts to help others. And that's certainly the case with the two guests uh, we have on today. We have uh, Andrea Casper, who is um, the uh, principal, I want to make sure I get the title right, head of school at uh, Solomon Schechter uh, Day School in West Hartford. And uh, Solomon Schechter is really for, for you know greater Hartford and uh, serves kids from all over the area. So we're going to talk to Andrea um, about what's going on at the school and some great things that the school is doing. And then Raviv, who is uh, a fifth grader, 10 years old, and I think you're going to be amazed um, by how he is choosing to celebrate his birthday, both in the past and I think going forward as well. So um, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you. We're excited to be here. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. And are you okay missing a little of school to do this? Is that all right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, big sacrifices. <laughs> uh, so, Andrea, thank you uh, again. And tell us what's going on at Solomon Schechter and this uh, really uh, just wonderful tradition that has begun, right? Yeah, so um, what's been emerging for us in the school, mostly in our lower school, so children from kindergarten through fifth grade that we're seeing is that they're having their birthday parties, like all children do, yeah. and the invitations come out, generally by Evite, and we get this little note that says, in lieu of gifts, please consider making a gift to and some charitable cause. And when we looked into it, it's because there's a charity that the child feels really committed to. And so they are making the choice, really as early as five, six years old, to say, I don't need any more gifts. And I would like to get participation from my friends to support something that's important to me. And that's been a really wonderful moment for me as head of school and for all of our school because it's so much of what we do in our school mm -hmm. is thinking about our community. Uh, both local and beyond and wanting to instill a sense of philanthropy and giving back and it's such an indication that we're succeeding and that our families are really taking this on. Yeah, so out of your uh, lower school students, right, how many would you say are in, are in Solomon Sector? We have, uh, in the lower school, we have about 60 kids okay. and I would say about a third of them have been doing this and wow. it's growing yeah. as it's happening. I think more and more kids are seeing it and we've seen things for collections to CCMC and things for, you know, national organizations. Yeah. It's very beautiful. It is. So, Reverend, how come you decided to do this and forego birthday gifts? Well, it was in um, Seattle at a, there are only two. <laughs> that it was big on helping the animals expand in their life. Um, so when you walked in, you got tokens, and there were like six animals of the day, let's say. Okay, so you were visiting Seattle, is that right? Yes. At the time? Okay. Yep. And, and with those tokens, you got to save one of those animals. Oh, and I was really inspired by that. So I told my mom, hey, I, I really like this. When, 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 how could I do this for myself? Yep. And she said that there's this fund called WWF World Wildlife Fund and you, and instead of getting birthday gifts you can save animals instead and I like the idea seven seven months later we came back and my, no not whatever um, that's all right you're doing great by the way so I'm <laughs> yeah, so, so nervous she, about you, so. so seven months later when it was my birthday people asked me what I wanted for my birthday I said I want to raise money for WWF and so we told them that we we raised a lot. Sadly, we don't know how much we raised, and 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 my mom told Whole Foods to make a really special cake for me with all my favorite animals on it. It was really really sweet. Yep. And my, when my dad came to pick it up, they said it was on the house. They donated that to my birthday, so we had a few extra dollars to to so I can get a mm -hmm. golden lion tamarind. It's called adopting. You pay. $70 and you get an animal stuffed animal of it. Yep. Like what you, 
You want to show people? You yeah. have some things to, yeah. to show, right? This it's is very him. exciting to show. Yeah. This is him. He's really fluffy. So put him right up here on He's the table like, so it, we can get a nice shot of him. It's mm. like it's like family to me because I really love animals and I'm really upset that they're going extinct. So that's why I'm going to do it again this year. Great. So what does this animal represent? So you get this, correct me if I'm wrong, you get this animal after you make some donations, right, and kind of identify a certain species of animal that yeah. you want to help protect. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he represents for me like courage and being smart because these type of tamarins are really smart. They have to be fast because they have a lot of predators. And they don't usually get shot because they caught yep. because they work together. And that's and it really is sort of like me. That's why he's my favorite animal of all time. Wow. So what other things, uh, Andrew, have you seen um, children identify with? You identified some of the causes. Yeah, right? well, so CCMC keep, comes keep up. up. Want, I know you have another one, too, right? Something to show. But, For our students, yep. uh, tremendously. Sometimes they're actually collecting things to take and sometimes in more charitable financial. Um, we've had children collect dog food and cat food for mm -hmm. animal shelters. That was actually for a three-year-old last year wow. did that. Um, wow. so, what I, so what I mean to say is that even if the child, the three-year-old, may not have come up with this on their own, there's a conversation in the home about you know, where are our values mm -hmm. and how do we want to um, come together as a community around even a birthday to do something good. We've had um, families and children also collect for the South Park Inn. And so those are, and the World Wildlife Fund has come up a lot. Yep. I think there's a lot of passion for the state of animals these days. Yeah. Uh, and school. how does this fit into your overall mission? Because I know this yeah. is just a piece of it, right? Right. So a large part of our mission is what we really hope to do is send kids out into the world who are going to do good and be models for good and that they navigate a really unknown world, right? Like we, it's constantly changing and evolving. But what we want them to know is that they are also empowered to take action um, for good mm -hmm. on behalf of others in need and to change things that are happening in the world that maybe they find distasteful or less than good. And we see it in a lot of ways. So we do a lot of work like that in our school. And last year I had the privilege of working with the current eighth graders mm -hmm. to redesign the student council. And so I sat with this group and they had two primary goals that completely came for them. They said the purpose of the student council is to give voice to the students to the for the administration and for even the parent association. And they said the second one was to help organize charitable giving and charitable action. Yeah. Right. Wow. So it's coming from all levels in different ways. Sometimes student-led yeah. within the school and sometimes child-led right. outside of the school. So you said that you're going to do this mm -hmm. again. Your birthday's in March, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, and you're going to do this again for the same cause? Um, Is that right? Or maybe, are you going to pick a different one? Maybe I'm going to pick a different one, like cat food. But I want it to be based on animals because for me, animals are a big thing in my life. Mm -hmm. And I forgot to show you guys this. Okay. It's like beautiful cake from Whole Foods. <laughs> all right. And here, we'll hold it up. So and this is yeah. the one they donated. Yeah, this is right? the one that they donated. All right. Donated, yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah, but, that's a good shout out to Whole Foods mm -hmm. when they do something great. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's but I, for, for my life, animals have been a big part of me. They, they've been like, sort of like my family. Yeah. Animals, they just like get me sort of. Like, when we went to another zoo, I got to see a golden lion tamarind in person. And they, sh and they always had to take them out because they were pooping on other people. Oh, <laughs> Which is yeah. really well, ridiculous, but not me. And cats, whenever I walk up yeah. to them, they just go right to me. It's like I, yeah. they, they know what I'm thinking. What amazes me um, is that you, I mean, obviously you like animals and animals yeah. like you, but for you it wasn't just about you know, getting a pet and your own experience, yeah. but that you really want to help all animals. Yeah, right. all animals, tigers, yeah. bears, lions, crocs, whatever. Crocs I don't really too. care. I so, think, what, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, what I think is so lovely about Raviv's story yeah. is that he helped inspire it, continue and grow within our school because he was one of the first kids right. to take this on. And then even in a small little act, it inspired others to, to do Absolutely. good and kind of sure. join him. Yeah, which yeah. Is so, so cool. do you have friends who, um, like, so say I was, um, your buddy in school, okay. right? And I was 10 years old, and I was deciding what to do for my birthday. What would your pitch be to me? What would you tell me to do? I, right? I would say, go from your heart and do 
something that's good for the world because you can get gifts any day, but you can't help another person or another thing or another animal in need every single day. Wow. That's pretty good. You got me, mm -hmm. right? I mean, I, so I'll have you come over to my house and you can talk to my kids as well. So maybe they'll, because they have birthdays coming up too. So yeah. March, um, yeah, we have a March, April, and October mm -hmm. uh, birthdays. Um, so you're going to do it next year and you're trying to decide, right, yeah. as to what to, okay. So for anyone who's watching and has a suggestion, maybe you have a great <laughs> suggestion for Revive or, or other organizations, I mean, there's a plethora of them out there, um, you can uh, shoot me an email and um, I'll give, we'll put up my contact information now, but it's uh, Derek Slap and, uh, bless you, and um, the uh, email is Derek, D-E-R-E-K dot S-L-A-P at CGA, so that stands for Connecticut General Assembly, CGA. Uh, dot gov. Um, and you can also um, certainly, you know, just call um, the legislative office building um, and ask for me uh, as well. We're always looking for suggestions uh, and for, you know, if you have ideas uh, for a slap salutes uh, segment, by all means, uh, send me an email. Uh, but before uh, we go, kind of last uh, question, Andrea, mm -hmm. um, you know, any message that you have for people who want to learn more about the mission of, of Solomon Schechter and about how you are kind of sending ripples of goodness out, out into the community? Right? Yeah, I think that stands at the core of what we're trying trying to do aside from you know providing an excellent education is that we want that education to have a purpose and a purpose of empowerment and and activism for whatever the passion is of each individual and anybody who is interested in learning more about our school our doors are open and we love to share and we especially love to inspire yeah. through our students and I think Raviv you did a fantastic job inspiring others thanks Thank you have you. inspired me and I'm sure many, <laughs> many others who are watching. So thank you so much. And it's nice to meet you. It's nice to see you again. Thank and, you uh, for thank having you. us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next month. Uh, until then, uh, have a great month. So long. Mm -hmm.